Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a Dixie Narco 501E, 276E, or 600E drink vending machine over to 12 ounce cans. Now being that the E-Series is a very versatile drink machine able to vend various package sizes, anything from 12 ounce cans up to 24 ounce bottles, and the addition of having to install parts and make adjustments, I can find that this is going to be very confusing for the first time vendor when they first get their drink machine. So in this video I hope it's going to kind of shed some light on how to convert it over to 12 ounce cans. Now I've been fortunate enough to be able to get a rack assembly out of a Dixie Narco 501E. So I'll be using this in the demonstration purposes. This is going to allow me to actually get a little better shots in the video. And how I've done this is I've actually broken the video down into different segments. So in the description you'll find links to where you can jump to those chapters. As a matter of fact, in the scrolling timeline on your video you can actually jump to those different segments so that way you can get the information that you feel is relevant to you. If you find this video useful, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell. Make sure you give a thumbs up too if you found this video useful for you. If you have any questions or comments or ideas of videos that you would like to see, please leave a comment below. I do answer a lot of questions in the comments and if you have any questions, please put them down there. I'm happy to help. I want you to become successful in operating your vending machines. So with that being said, let's get started. Now I'm going to convert a narrow column on a Dixon Arco 501E or 600E or 276E over to 12 ounce cans. So to do this, I'm going to have to first remove the bottle shim I have in there and install the can shim. So we are going to need to have a can shim in order to start this process. So this is what a can shim looks like. Now you always know that the can shim has always got this notch cut out here, which is basically about the same size as a 12 ounce can. And it's always got this little ridge or shelf right here, this, this little piece. Now the way this would go in is it fits in and slides down on the right hand side. So you only use one shim for this, but it's a specific design shim for that. So you're going to also going to need a rod and spring. Now this is the rod and spring. It's got a spring on one side and this will, so this will be the rear and this will be the front. This would actually sit inside the cradle, uh, which is this piece right here. So this is what the actual cradle inside a machine looks like. It fits in like this. This is where the motor attaches to. It couples here and this would actually rotate. So your products would sit in here and as the motor rotates, this rotates around and then would drop the drinks. Matter of fact, it goes this way and drops the drinks. It comes back around, scoops the next uh, set of drinks and then repeats the process. So we're also going to need to install that rod into the cradle. But first things first, we need to get the can shim or bottle shim that's in there, excuse me, actually out of that. And this can actually be the most difficult process to do because there's actually a little shelf on there, much like the 12 ounce can shim. There's a little shelf, not as big as this, but there is a shelf. So you just can't pull it out if the cradle is in an upside down state like this. It gets hung up here, so you can't pull it out. So we need to rotate the cradle to let's call it a half moon shape. So usually if the cradle sits like this, the cradle may be like this, but we're going to rotate it so it's like this so we can pull stuff out from uh, the cradle. So to do that we need to rotate the cradle. Now how I've always done this, there's several different ways. I'm going to give you the way that I've always done it and felt is the easiest for me. Is I've always done this without power to the machine. I've always unplugged the machine from the wall or disconnected the stack plug so there's no power to your motors. These are 110 volt motors because we're going to be reaching our hands underneath the cradle and we don't want the machine to prematurely start turning those uh, cradles when we got our hands in there. So the way I've always done it, I've always unplugged the machine. So the first things first I need to do here is I like to manually open the cradle. Now on the motors there are several different components here. We have a brake on the motor and that brake sits at the bottom here and you can lift on it and lift the brake off of the actual armature. Now the other thing we need to pay attention for is the home switch or the uh, this little cherry switch at the bottom that rides up against the timing cam. We want to make sure we push that down and out of the notch of the timing cam. So I've always done with my ring finger, I've always pushed it down or over my middle finger and then my index finger, I push up on the brake, release the brake and then I'm going to spin the armature. So to do this, I am spinning the armature anti-clockwise 
And I'm just going to keep spinning it like this, and that cradle is slowly opening up. And I'm going to keep spinning it enough where I got it open. So now this cradle is actually in a half moon position, we'll call it, and I'm able to reach in there and pull this cradle, pull the actual shim right out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Out it comes. So I got that shim all the way out. So this is the bottle shim. And just you notice the, the little shelf here is not as wide as the one that you'd find on a 12 ounce can shim. And it's got these little notches here for the different size bottles. So that has now been removed. We're now gonna take the can shim and we're gonna place that in there. So again, it goes up against the right hand side wall, slides down, this is the rear, this is the front. And it's gonna slide down and it's gonna hang on those little metal bars that run the entire width of the, of the uh, chassis. So right hand side wall goes in the side, slide it down. side here. And now the can shim is set in place. Two things you can do here. What I've always done is I've always brought the cradle back to where I was originally. So again, by using the same process as I press down on the cherry switch and I then lift up on the brake and I'm going to spin the armature clockwise. And it's going to keep going until I bring it back to where it was or when the cherry switch will ride in the notch. There we go, it's now in its notch, so that's good to go. So I've got the cradle in, and with it, with the, with the, I mean, excuse me, the shim in, and with the shim in, I've got the cradle upside down. So this makes it easier for me to reach underneath to put in the rod and spring. So with the rod and spring, on these cradles, there are three holes here on the front and the rear. So this is the front and this is the rear. There are three holes that we have to put the rod and spring in. So we always use the middle hole uh, for whenever we're using 12 ounce cans. I've never really come, up, come in a process where I've had to use the other two holes, the outer hole, or what they actually, they label them A, B, and C. Um, so I've never really ever used the A hole on this one, excuse me, but sorry for the bad, terminology there, but I've never used uh, the first hole there. I've always used B, and uh, C has been for weird products like Red Bull when we can get those to work, but can't seem to get them to work properly anymore. So to put the rod in is we have a spring on one side, and that goes in the rear. You simply push it, compress the spring, and then slide the front part so it locks into place here. So I'll do that again. I reach in here. Now it locks into place. Very easy when we have the cradle outside of the machine. A little more difficult when you have to go underneath to actually put the rod in there. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this rod. So I'm gonna reach underneath. And now again, I have this chassis outside the machine. It's actually a little bit more difficult than what's actually inside the machine. I actually have to get a little bit lower to the floor. But I'm gonna reach in, I'm gonna go from underside, is I'm gonna put the rod in, I'm gonna press it into the, uh, the middle hole, push in and then reach up and get it into the middle hole on the front part of the cradle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna go underneath here. Now I've got it set in the rear hole and then I like to do is on the side here, you can actually see the holes and you can just line it up to find that uh, center hole or middle hole for the front. Now that rod is now in place for this column here. Now we've got two more things that need to be done to get this one converted over to 12 ounce cans. This one is going to be a process is adjusting the back spacer. Now that back spacer has to be brought forward for 12 ounce cans and needs to go into hole number 13. Now there are holes in the, in the column, left and right hand side walls with index holes. And that index hole is always representing the third hole, every third hole. So it's three, six, nine, twelve. So I will remove the back spacer, locate uh, my index hole, of 12 index hole, and then a one space back from that is where I'll be placing that back spacer into. So what I've always done is I always reach my hand in, grab the back spacer, push it over to the left, twist it so I can pull the back spacer out, then find my index holes, and then lock it into place. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna reach in with my right hand, grab that, I'm pushing over to the left hand side, Twisted it out, find his index hole three, 
six, nine, 12, and then one space back from that. There we are. Go ahead and adjust the top, the right hand side. Now I'm gonna adjust the back, the bottom of it, excuse me. So there's three, six, nine, 12. And now I've got that backspace reset for this column. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to set our timing cam. Um, again, there's a video I have that explains a little bit more detail, a link above, uh, about how to adjust these timing cams. But we're gonna be setting this into hole number one on the narrow columns on the brown timing cam. So to adjust the cam to do 12 ounce cans, we're gonna rotate to hole number one, which is this hole right here. That's hole, so it's one, two, three, this is hole five, and this is hole four. Notice that we've only got one, two notches on this wheel for the uh, for two products deep. Now 12 ounce cans load three products deep, so we need to actually rotate this top portion here to get to three products deep. So we're gonna, and 12 ounce cans are always used in hole number one on the brown timing cam. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that now. So the first thing I do is I press down on the home switch to pull it out of the notch. So I'm holding it down. Now there's a handle right here, and I'm just going to lift up, I'm bending it forward, and I'm gonna rotate until I get the pin into hole number one right there. And that's good to go. Now you'll notice we've got three knots. There's one, two, three notches. So this means the wheel will stop three times for 360 degree rotation. And that's all I needed to do to get this column is now set for 12 ounce cans. And that's all we need to do for that one. I'm gonna go ahead and convert column number one or selection number one on a Dix Narco 501E or 600E over to 12 ounce cans. Now the first thing I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need a can shim. Now this is what the can shim looks like and this is specifically just for the wide column found in a 501E or 600E. Now you can always note the can shim is it has a notch cut out like this. Matter of fact, this notch is the same size as a 12 ounce can. Now I've always imagined this being an ax. If this was a handle and this was the blade, then I know that this is the front, that would be the rear of the shim. Now you might find some shims or you may have some shims that doesn't have this waffle pattern, it's solid plastic, it's perfectly fine. There's just different design for these. Now the way these shims will sit down is they sit onto little broads that run the entire width of the front and the rear of the chassis inside the drink machine. And these little tabs here is where the rod will sit. So when these things are slid into the cradle or the column, they will just hang there, simply just hang there. Now keep in mind, you're gonna need a total of eight of these shims. There's gonna be four that need to be placing on the left-hand side and four that need to be placed on the right-hand side for the wide column in your machine. So let's go ahead and start putting the shims in first. So I've already removed the old shims. They, get, they just pull right out. So I've already removed the old shims. Let's go ahead and get the uh, can shims in and we'll start with that. Go ahead and put some on the left-hand side. So I just like to get them lined up, put the shim in, and then they just slide down the wall and you just hang on the little rod there. So I'm gonna to try to do this. Now you can do this in sets of two or sets of three or sets of four. You don't have to do each one individually, but I'm gonna do this for demonstration purposes and also I'm trying to be very careful not to bump the camera. All right, so we've got that. And going to the fourth one here on the left hand side. So we've got the four in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the right hand side. Again, just gonna place them up against the side wall then slide them down. The ones on the right, again, I'll be very careful, I'll bump the camera, so I'm just gonna find it. There we go. All right, and the last but not least, here comes number four. I'll put that in. There. All right, so I've got all the shims in that I need for column number one to get 12 ounce cans. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to actually adjust the back spacer. Now this is this back spacer here that keeps the products pulled forward so they're pressing down on the sold out flap. Now if, the, if this back spacer is too far back, the products will actually shift as they're being vended and pull away from the sold out flap. As soon as the sold out flap comes up, 
it will uh, basically tell the computer board that there's nothing in that column and flag it as sold out. So we always want to keep the products up against the sold out flat so it's always being pressed downwards, lifting up off of the cherry switch. Uh, now, if you have it too tight, then you have a problem. So you always want to make sure you have a good little bit of gap. Always consider about a quarter of an inch gap between the backspacer and your product. Now, for 12 ounce cans on a Duke Stark of 501E or 600D, we're actually going to be moving that backspacer and placing it to hole number 13. Now, there are set holes that go along the left and right hand side walls of the machine where that backspacer can snap into. And there's also an index hole. That index hole is actually always set at three. So you can always have three and then you look back, the next index hole is going to be six, the next one is going to be nine, then 12, etc. So we need to go to hole 13. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and reach in, grab the right hand side, push to the left, twist it out, go to my first index hole. There's three, six, nine, 12, and then I'll do 13. Now I'm going to push and I'm going to bring it over the right hand side and match it up. So I go three, six, nine, 12, that. Now I'm going to look at the bottom, three, six, nine, 12. And this one's actually not set right. I go back one. And now I've got that backspacer set for the 12 ounce cans. Again, that's going to be in hole 13 for that. Now the last thing we need to do here is actually set the timing cam. Now to adjust the timing cam to 12 ounce cans, we're going to be loading at three cans on the left, three cans on the right. That gives us six total drinks for a full 360 rotation of this timing cam. Now currently this is set for bottles and we can count that because we got, there's, there's notch number one, notch number two, notch number three, and over here where the home switch is, that's notch number four. So we need to have six of these notches around the outer perimeter. So to do that, we're just going to need to rotate the top portion disc here, and we're going to be putting into hole number two, which is this hole just to the left of my thumb. Now, the way they've got these numbered is this is one, this is three, and this is Two doesn't make sense, but it's one, three, two. The same thing goes on the brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift up on this, rotate this, and now we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five. Come back around, there are six. So we've got six notches all the way around the timing wheel. That means this this wheel here will stop six times for 360 rotation to drop our six. 12 ounce can drinks. So that's all that needs to be done to adjust column number one over to 12 ounce cans. It's a pretty simple job really. Now I hope you found this information useful of how to configure your Dixie Narco E-Series drink vending machine to vend 12 ounce cans. You've learned how to manually open and close the cradle, how to install both the plastic and metal shims into the wide and narrow columns and to adjust their back spacers. Now if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell. For everyone that already has liked and subscribed, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Now until then, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.